We're joined now by Purdue head coach Matt Painter and Purdue student athletes Zach Eady and Braden Smith. We'll ask Coach Painter to open things up with a statement. Yeah, I uh, want to congratulate uh, UConn um, on the win. I thought they um, had some separation there in the first half. At the end, that we had a couple plays where they made some tough shots. We had some shots at the rim, and it just kind of pushed that lead to six right there. And we needed a, you know, kind of a break to keep that even. But I thought the difference. I thought it, uh, our guys really gave good effort and energy defensively in guarding them. And I thought that the real difference ended up being their ability to offensive rebound in the second half. We just were wasting so much energy to fight once they got it to double digits, and then we would get stops and we couldn't get rebounds. And that was just really hard for us to overcome at that time. They did a great job of staying home, and then you know we were gonna go to the well with Zach as much as we could at that point. But you know, you know, in a game like this, we had to be able to rebound defensively better and then we, we had to have something balance that out, and that was her threes, and they just stayed home with us. They did a really good job defensively. Um, you know, they, they get a lot of credit, and Donovan Klingon's a very good defensive player, but we've played against athletes, you know, and, and played against some really good defensive guys this year and in the tournament, but not the collection of defensive players like UConn has. You know, we, we'd play against somebody and they'd have a lockdown defender. These guys are bringing lockdown defenders off the bench. And, um, you know, defense always travels. And, um, you know, tip the hat to them. They were great. Danny's done a fabulous job. Obviously, they won back-to-back -back national championships. And uh, congratulations uh, to UConn. We're going to take questions for the Purdue student athletes first. If you have a question for Zach or Braden, let's start on the right side. Myron. Matt, obviously, Zach has been able to carry this team in back-to-back -back years. How do you think he should be remembered uh, as one of the greats in the collegiate game at his position? Is that for me? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, well, you know, when you look at a lot of things, I think the separator normally comes to how successful somebody was, right? And so it's hard for me to – to look at things, but when you look at his numbers against the greats, he, there's no question he's in the conversation, but he's also the winningest player at Purdue. And, you know, we won our league back-to-back -back years by multiple games. First time that's happened in the Big Ten since I was in kindergarten. Um, we got to the championship game after having a disappointing loss. He got to a Sweet 16. He went to four tournaments. Um, so I, I, I think that's always what kind of separates everybody wants to have the argument about a goat right who's the greatest and who's this and that's the ultimate separator because every person in that conversation is great you know I think he was great in how he did it too and so people have no idea the burden that you carry when you're as good as he is and you produce like he is going into opposing arenas and the stuff you hear but those guys a lot of those old timers they didn't have to hear it on social media. They didn't have, for young people that are successful, they, they have to go through a lot of stuff. And, um, but in a way you kind of like it because it, it toughens you up and it allows you to focus and it allows you to, to push through things. I just told them in the locker room, like, you're not gonna go on in life and push past here and not deal with adversity. In the workforce, in relationships, everything. You know, you're going to deal with adversity and he was superior dealing with adversity. You know, he was a guy that didn't get recruited. And then all of a sudden he started to get recruited and then that picked up and that get, you know, got him on edge and all the great ones stay on edge. And uh, I think he's gonna be a terrific NBA player and we're really proud of him. Questions only for the Purdue student athletes. We'll do questions with Coach Painter in a few moments. On the right. Chris Hagan, Fox 59, Indianapolis, Brayton. It was a nice bounce back game for you. You hit the team's only three pointer. You guys only tried seven on the night, which is unusual. What were they doing specifically to make it so difficult to get looks? Yeah, they just did a really good job um, guarding the three. And we got in the paint plenty of times. We just didn't convert on a lot of them. Um, so I thought we did our job pretty well. I mean, they also did their job pretty well guarding the three, but we just got to convert on those in the paint. Next question is all the way in the back on the left side for Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with The Athletic. 
Zach, I know it's terribly difficult to ask you to put things in perspective right now, but you've spoken eloquently about your relationship with Coach Painter and what he's meant to you. As you sit here and kind of try to process all of this, can you put some context into what this whole experience has been for you? You're talking about like uh, in relation to Coach Paint or just in general? I don't know. It's like you said, it's tough. It's tough to think about that right now. Um, you know, Paint, like I've always said, Paint's someone who kind of just gave me a chance. Um, I've been trying for four years to pay him back for that. Um, but he just he just came in. Like he, he believed in me when not a lot of people believed in me. Um, and he gave me the ball. Not a lot of coaches did that. Not a lot of coaches trusted me uh, in that role. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm, it's, it's tough for me to think of stuff like that right now. Up front, Aaron. Aaron Beard with the AP. <clears throat> this is for Zach as well. Kind of obviously, you you were facing off against a guy with a lot of size and talent. They were also bringing you know defensive help a lot. Kind of how did you think you were? handling all the defensive attention you were getting, uh, especially as the lead guy that had anything going tonight? Um, I mean, it's something I've dealt with all year. Um, teams kind of game plan around around guarding the post a lot of times when they play us. Um, they did a good job um, showing, kind of mixing up some defenses, playing some one-on-one. Um, Klingon's a great player, but I, I just got to play better. Um, this is one of those games where I, I got I can't go through stretches where I'm not effective, and I had a few of those stretches today, um, and that was that was the game. Third row on the left. Claire Hanna with TSN. This is for Zach. Zach, you clearly have had a huge impact on this program. When you reflect on where you've come in your journey, uh, what do you hope your legacy is with the Purdue Boilermakers? I don't know. Uh, I don't think that's that's kind of for for, the, for Purdue to decide. I'm not. I'm not gonna tell my own legacy, but um, I think for me, the big thing is uh, you can say whatever you want about me. You can say however I play. You can say whatever, but uh, you can never say that I didn't give it my 100% every single time I stepped on the floor, every single time I went in practice, uh, and that's that's what I always hang my hat on. I kind of I came in, and I never didn't give it 100%. Final question for the student-athletes from Purdue up front. Braden, what is it about Zach in the two years you spent with him that you've enjoyed the most, and what is it about Zach that you will miss the most when he leaves? Yeah, man, I, I just enjoy just playing with him. I mean, he taught me so much. Um, I went from 6'4 centers to 7'4 centers, so definitely a huge change. But just being with a guy like him, I mean, he's a two-time national player of the year, and he's the most unselfish person you'll ever meet. And like Coach Paint said, like he gets more hate than anybody for no reason. Like, like for what? that he's just out there dominating everybody. Like, it's just it's just stuff like that. I mean, he's just going out there just enjoying the game that he loves. I mean, he hasn't played it for long. And just to have somebody like that that just wants to go out there and play because that's what he loves and people want to give him crap for it. So just seeing that um, makes me kind of admire him a little bit more because I realize, like, hey, you're the top of the game and you're still getting hate on just because you love the game. And then when he's gone, just, I mean, just who he is as a person. I mean, he's just a great dude, great dude. We want to congratulate Braden and Zach on a great season in the run to the title game. They're going to head back to the locker room now and join their teammates. The Purdue locker room should be open until about 9.21 p.m. Thanks, guys. If you have a question for Coach Painter, please raise your hand. We'll send a microphone stored in your direction. Let's start up front on the left. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Coach, can you talk about the three-point uh, percentage? You guys came in one of the top teams in the country in that you didn't even get off that many shots so right. what were they doing to take that away yeah you know they were just going to let us play one-on-one -on -one in the post you see the 25 attempts that Zach had um, you know and, and so like for us we're just going to throw him the basketball and keep going and um, and just be able to keep going to the well you hope through the game and like what you do like that we could loosen that and get them. You know, when you play in the NCAA tournament and you win six games, and they led for, I think, everything except six minutes now. I think it was like four minutes and 20 seconds or something. So just kind of think about that. You got to get them on their heels. And so for us to get them to change, we had to get the lead, get them on their heels, 
and then get you know into that 10 minute mark and whatever and we we couldn't get there we couldn't get rebounds we couldn't you can't go on runs if you can't get stops and they're, they're a great defensive team and so they they just made a decision like we can defend the perimeter and we can take this away from you and then you're just going to get the ball to your best player and then he's just going to be one-on-one and then that's that and they they were they were, were going to live with that so if we could have rebounded the basketball better I, you know, we could have got them to change and do that, but we just we, we weren't able to do that, and then they stayed in control of the game. So not everybody can do what they just did. You know, you have to give credit to their defense and their coach and how they're wired. Staying up front, Dennis. Matt, Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. You touched on it about the, the burden he had to go through all the crap for four years. Yeah. But there was another kind of burden, and during that, as well as getting better and carrying this team. I wonder if you could just expand on that. All of that he had to go through. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's also a backhanded compliment, right? You know, the, the people like myself who average four points, no one really cares about you. Like, nobody, the fans don't, like, pay attention to you. I always call it cartoon bad guy. You know, you ever watch the cartoons and there's the bad guy that gets all the hate and everybody's coming at him. You know, like the best player in college basketball, the best player in your conference becomes cartoon bad guy. And so, like, that's just, you know, it's the way it is. But it's also a backhanded compliment. There's, a, there's millions of basketball players out there that would love to carry that burden. Not everybody can do it. Very few get that. And, you know, he's done it, and he shows up. I always was – I'd always say, like, like, like when is he just going to have a bad game? Like, when is he just not going to show up? He, he always showed up. He always competed. He always played through physicality. He, you know, he's a very unselfish player. And I think that's the piece of it. But it's, um, it, it's, it's hard, man. It, 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 it's hard to go through that, especially in today's world, because what eats up a, a young player is positive comments because then they get full of themselves. And then the negative comments, like you, all, you feel sorry for them, like, hey, this guy doesn't deserve this or whatever. So it's kind of how you look at things and how you handle things. And he always stayed really professional and um, – you know, even when they're hanging on him and, and, and fouling him and, and doing stuff throughout the year. See, they didn't do that at first. You know, because, you know, who he is today, that's not who he was three years ago. So I always would talk about, like, he'd play 17 minutes, he'd get 12 points, he'd get six rebounds, he'd have four fouls, six turnovers, and we go to the monitor twice. And then, like, you know, and all of a sudden, six games later, like, he's not elbowing people in the head anymore. You know, he's, he's you know, he couldn't pass at one time. And then all of a sudden, he, he could pass. Well, he never got doubled, so why should he have to pass? So, like, it just – it's amazing the way he's grown and the way he's developed, and, and, but also how he's went about it and, and the way he stayed professional. On the left side, midway back, hand the microphone right there. Thank you. Lucas Gordon, uh, Cronkite News. Uh, earlier this season, you guys played a lot of good non-conference opponents and took down the number one team at the time, Arizona and Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh, did you use any of those games as a point of emphasis coming into this one since you were playing the number one team in the country once again? No, not really. Um, you know, the, the point of interest is like you play Illinois and like Terrence Shannon can really guard you. And you play Tennessee and Ziegler can really guard you. And it doesn't mean the other guys aren't great defensive players, probably good defensive players, right? And um, I'm kind of in theory here. So – they just had so many good defensive players. Like, uh, at every position, like, those guys do a great job. They know how to play. They move without the basketball. They have experience, you know, from Tristan Newton's fifth year, Cam Spencer's fifth year, um, you know. But, like, Caravan and Klingon, like, in their second year, they play like veterans. Like, they just they, they have a great program. They have a great system, both offensively and defensively. They're a well-oiled machine. Um, that's where they separate because they do have laws offensively if you watch them. They, they have, you know, they'll beat somebody by 25 and go three for 20 from three. You're like, well, damn. Like, you know, what if they go 12 for 20? Like, you know, but it, it kind of shows you who they are. Like, they didn't get out on us and, and really get in transition because we didn't turn the ball over, you know, as much as some other people that they've played. But they're just, you know, they're so good when they get in transition and they get those runs. Um, but the difference with them is, is, is how they are defensively. They're, they're, a very, they're, they're a better defensive team overall than all those other teams that we played, and that says something because those are some pretty good teams. In the back of the room on the right side. 
Raise your hand for us. Thank you. Andy Dorf, uh, Sports Byline USA Radio Network. Talk about that on-the-ball pressure and how daunting it was for you guys to get in your sets right. and why it made you guys so one-dimensional. Yeah, you know, we, we were one-dimensional because of how good, you know, Zach Eady is. So we were, we were comfortable going to him, right? We were comfortable continue to do that because that's what they're, that's what they're giving you. When a great defensive team says, okay, here's how we're going to play it, and you want to fight that and you want to take tough bad threes, bad threes are going to be runouts for them. And that's what we really talked about. We kept showing those clips. And guys, you know, you hear people say, you know, they get thirsty. You know, three-point shooters that don't get looks now start take ones that they shouldn't take. And now that for them, they're just going to go score at the other end. So that's what we were talking about. Just take what they give you. You know, if they take something away, whether it's Zach's post up, Braden's ball screen, our threes, we still can get a quality shot. You know, we had to be better on the glass, in my opinion. And then we had to be a little bit more efficient, you know, in the shots that we were getting. And that balance right there could have got us into the game. It would have got us into the game um, and, and made it a game. But we, we just simply weren't able to do that. Up front on the right side. Uh, Greg Braggs, Boilers in the Stands. Matt, last year when you guys lost to Fairleigh Dickinson, you said you had to sit in it. Now, fast forward to this year, you lose in the national championship. How is that feeling the same, or is it different, and how does it motivate you to get back to this point? Yeah. No, it's a lot different. It's obviously a lot different to get um, to the Final Four and get into the championship game. You know, it hurts because, you know, these, these opportunities are slim. You know, you, you say you're going to get back here, but, you know, you want to use this as motivation to get it back here and keep growing your program. Uh, but, no, it, it's, it's a lot different um, than, you know, last year when you put yourself in a great position and you don't take advantage of it. We put ourselves in a great position now, and we took advantage of it. We just came up a little bit short to a great team. But I told our guys in the locker room, like, you know, when you have the most wins in school history, you're the first ten team to win back-to-back -back championships by multiple games since 1976, which was the last undefeated team in college basketball and you get, you know, an eyelash away from winning it all, like that, you know, that's the standard. And, and so, like, now we're going to, just like any other year, we're going to take two to three weeks off, and then we're going to get back to work. And obviously it's not going to be a lot of work until, you know, the summer in terms of from a team standpoint. But, you know, those guys are going to be getting into the gym and, and, and fighting and competing. And we like our young guys that are coming in next year, you know, so we're excited. We want to congratulate Coach Painter on his run to the championship game and thank him for spending all the time this week here in the main interview room. Thank you, Coach.